peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I don't know about you, but we've had a fairly emotional day, at least I have felt that with the, uh, this morning, the resignation of Father Nicholas, and all that it means for us and for what we're going to be doing these days. Even beginning last night with the very evocative uh, homily of audacity, audacity in faith, the audacity for the improbable,
his life, it was a bit controversial, and probably even since. How many houses in your province are named the Borgia House? <laughs> Not so popular, perhaps more popular in the south of Europe, but many places not uh, not somehow, somehow not attractive as a personality, but really, when you look at his life, he was a quite remarkable man, having served in the in the uh, court of Charles V and then uh, married, uh, had eight children. And his wife died when he was about 36, I think, about that time he joined. It was the Duke of Gandia, a hereditary title, if I'm not mistaken. But really a man of, of power and of politics. And he put all that aside to join the Jesuits. Some thought he was much favoured by Ignatius, who had, they thought, somewhat elitist views too. He, to uh, nobility and whatever. But be that as it may, he uh, was certainly quite an influential person. You know, through history, we've had many different generals, uh, and now we've had yet another one. Uh, Michael Campbell Johnson, some of you would know from British province, uh, summed it up in this way, he said, Ignatius set up the society as light cavalry. Borgia turned us into infantry. Aquaviva put us in barracks. Rutan cancelled all leave. Ledikovsky set up a concentration camp. <laughs> and Arupe said, break ranks. It was fascinating this morning to hear that uh, wonderful discourse of uh, uh, Father Lombardi, uh, and he characterized two specific features of Nico's time as general, universality and depth. And in some ways they sum up what we are challenged with at the moment. Our universal mission, which has been so much a theme of GC35, but also the need to be locally rooted in depth, to be enculturated. Uh, two uh, aspects of our mission which may seem to be in conflict, but as Father Arupe often insisted, are not at all in conflict. We can't be universal unless we're rooted with people locally. This uh, gospel today, that uh, is the gospel of today actually, rather than the Mass of Francis Borgia, but it's the Good Samaritan, and uh, it has that extraordinary theme of um, talking really about the law, of those who were bound somehow by the law, and uh, really giving a message that we need to be ready to break away, not from the law, Father, but to fulfill the law by living truly and deeply in spirit, not to be inhibited. And I think that this this universality and depth is the freedom that the society has lived for the last 50 years uh, under the leadership at that time of Arupe, as CJ put it, breaking, asking us to break ranks, meaning <coughs> to be ready to go to the peripheries. When uh, Pope Francis came to the Philippines, there were some of us here who met with him. Uh, in, he'd come to the Philippines from Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, he had been met by 40 elephants, all dressed beautifully. Uh, and uh, Tony Moreno, very uh, 
wittily said, Holy Father, when you went to Sri Lanka, you were met by 40 elephants. Here you're met by 40 Jesuits. <laughs> and the Pope replied, uh, but they were dressed, uh, they were dressed more colorfully than vestida da fiesta. But he, uh, he, hadn't, he told us he hadn't prepared anything, but as he was speaking, he spoke about a rupee, and he spoke about the end of the time of uh, Father Janssen's. And he spoke quite vehemently, even passionately, you could say, about Father Swain. Well, I don't think he named him, but he said, the vicar at the time, he said, we were in a prison. And Arupe was a prophet. And he broke us out and really sent us to the frontiers. The Good Samaritan bends down, the God of mercy bends down to meet the one who is afflicted, who would be the Samaritan today, you will know from your own society and culture who is the outcast, who is the one who is himself discriminated against, himself or herself discriminated against, that is the one who reaches down to rescue this person, put him on his horse, pours, as the early fathers say, the oil of the sacraments to heal, takes him to the church, and promises to return and pay in full the ransom or the need that everything that is needed to redeem the wounded humanity, which is us. And that readiness to go out from what constrains us is uh, that's the challenge we have now, to be both inculturated in depth in our situation, but also with a vision of the marvelous, the universal. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you, eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bishop, and all who give hope to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Apostles, the Saints, St. Francis Borgia, and all who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and 
with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen.